Hello, welcome back. This is lesson 7.2.2. Slope as a measurement of rate. As we talked about yesterday, uh, we started talking about how slope can be uh, a measure of how fast something is going, um, you know, how quickly something is happening. So in this one, I also thought we were going to get to a problem called the big race. And here is heat one of the big race. So question number 62. Before a big race, participants often compete in heats, which are preliminary races that determine who competes in the final race. Late, later in your class, you'll compete in a tricycle race. Well, you won't literally get on a tricycle and do that. Um, we just don't have tricycles for that. But in this one, in the first heat, uh, Leslie, Christine, and Evie rode tricycles towards the finish line. Leslie began the race at the starting line, so she began at the starting point. We'd call that at zero, or the origin. And she rode at a constant rate of two meters every second. So I want you to take out a graph paper, and I want you to, you only really need quadrant one on this graph paper, and put Leslie starting at the, um, at the starting line at a zero, zero spot and how she rode at a constant rate of two meters every second. If you can't think of that, it would be up to over one. That's the last help I'm giving you on that part. Kristen got an eight meter head start. So how would you put an eight meter head start on your graph? Hopefully you didn't put the head start on the x-axis, but rather on the y. Then she rode two meters every five seconds. So I'd like you to graph her out, the two meters every five seconds, what her graph looks like. And then finally, Evie rode five meters every four seconds and got a four meter head start. So she got a head start as well and rode five meters every four seconds. So please graph those three. If you need to pause the video for a moment, do that. Now you should all have that graphed. Make sure that your scales are are uh, neatly scaled. Make sure to write the equation in terms of x and y for each of the above ones here. Um, let the x represent the seconds, y represent the distance, blah blah blah. Part b, after how many seconds, so this is a question you've got to answer based on your graph. After how many seconds did Leslie catch up to Evie? So you'll answer that here. How far were they from the starting line when, she, when Leslie caught Evie? And then, using your equal values method, confirm your answer algebraically. Set the one side up to the other side and solve it algebraically. You only need to solve for the x there. You don't need, well, if you do plug it in, it should match up with your y too. So my, my uh, extra talented students will solve for the y as well. My not so talented ones will solve only for the x. I wonder which student type you are. Letter C, if the race is 20 meters long, who won the race? Make sure you can justify your answer using your graph and your rules. Letter D, what is the slope of Christine's line? How does the slope of the line explain her rate of travel? Also known as what's her speed. So write that down here. And finally, letter E, K also rode in the seat. I know K is a brand new name. K wasn't listed up here, so there was a fourth rider now. K rode in the seat. When her, dis when her distance line is graphed, the rule is Y equals two-thirds X plus one. Go ahead, put her on the uh, graph as well. What was her speed, and did she get a head start? So that is your job for tonight. Finish up this question, the big race, put that on a graph, do it neatly so we can see it. Um, I don't want to see uneven lines and all that kind of stuff. It should look very nice when you bring this to class. And uh, have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow.